Most of the time I tend to roll my eyes when I hear a reaction like that upon landing, but I have to say that in this case, it was justified. This year, instead of flying to a galaxy far, far away for some pre-Christmas fun, I decided to enjoy some warmer weather a little bit closer to home at the most magical place on Earth, Disney World. No, I'm not five years old anymore, but I still had a great time even though it wasn't as warm as I expected. Well, until it was time to go home, that is. Originally, I was supposed to fly back to Newark with United aboard one of their 737 Maxes, and I was looking forward to this flight as I've always enjoyed traveling on board this plane. But early on departure date, I got a notification from United saying that my flight had been canceled, and that I was rebooked on another flight that left around 8 o'clock at night. This was definitely not the news I wanted to receive on Christmas Eve. But with bad weather wreaking havoc across the country, there wasn't much I could do. I could either stick with United and hope that the new flight that I was on wasn't also canceled, or I could take a chance and book another flight with either JetBlue or Southwest, who both still had scheduled flights back to New York. JetBlue's 2.35 p.m. flight was still relatively inexpensive, so I took a shot with them and canceled my reservation with United. In retrospect, I'm really glad that I didn't decide to go with Southwest instead. When we got to the airport, everything was calm and there was no sign of the chaos that was engulfing airports up north. Thankfully, check-in was a breeze. But there was still a part of me that thought that I would be spending Christmas in Florida. But I crossed my fingers and explored Orlando's Terminal C. This terminal was opened earlier this year and is really nice. The new complex is part of a $1.8 billion expansion project, which will see 120 new gates added to the airport. I've flown out of Orlando a few times recently, and this new terminal is a huge improvement over the old ones. Sitting here though, we received word that our flight was delayed by an hour. However, the good news was that the plane we'd be taking had actually taken off from Newark and was on its way down to Orlando. At this point, I didn't want to get my hopes up, but it was starting to look like I might actually make it home for Christmas. And then to our great relief, after a few hours our plane landed and we eventually began to board. Our savior today is this 10-year-old A320 named Blue Yorker. I always love how creative JetBlue gets with naming their planes, but at this point I really didn't care what it was called as long as it would get me back to New York. I booked a basic blue ticket which didn't have seat selection included, and to my luck I was randomly assigned seat 10A, which is in an emergency exit row. These even more space seats can cost about $60 extra to select, so I was glad to snag one for free. As the name implies, there's a ton of legroom, and all of the seats on this plane have an impressive set of amenities. Everyone has access to a universal outlet. There's a seat back IFE system, which also has a USB port, and an enormous storage pouch, which can fit almost everything you would need on a flight, including this used piece of gum from the last person that was sitting here. There is also a tray table, and the seats recline and have adjustable headrests. The armrest was a little different because I was next to the emergency exit, but it didn't bother me. A pretty good ride through today at uh, 35,000 feet. Uh, exception so, being our descent, we're planning on some pretty good bumps in our uh, descent. I'll remind you uh, as a time to keep up. I was extremely relieved when the cabin doors were closed and we finally pushed back. And by the way, the flight that United rebooked me on ended up being delayed until 11.44 at night.
Once we got up in the air, it was finally time to really settle in for this flight to New York. The IFE system is definitely a highlight on this plane. It's intuitive, and there's loads of options to choose from. I also love how JetBlue offers free Wi-Fi. In order to access it, you'll need to watch an ad, but once completed, you can browse the internet to your heart's content. I found that it was quick enough to watch YouTube videos and stream from Netflix. I definitely did not get bored on this flight. Shortly after reaching cruising altitude, the crew handed out some complimentary drinks and snacks. JetBlue definitely has the best snack selection of any US airline. You always have multiple items to choose from, and you're never just stuck with a Biscoff cookie. But if you're looking for something more substantial, they do have a buy on board menu. This A320 has three lavatories on board, one in the front and two in the back. Once I got back to my seat, I basically just chilled out for the rest of the flight. This exit row seat was great, and I was very fortunate to receive it for free. But a few months before this flight, I flew on board another JetBlue A320, but in a standard economy seat, and I also found that to be very comfortable as well. Moral of the story, I don't think you can go wrong sitting anywhere on this plane. As we approached JFK, we flew into a lot of turbulence. But this was a small price to pay to be actually making it home at a reasonable hour today. On behalf of all of us here at JetBlue, especially this Fort Lauderdale based crew, thanks again so much for flying with us this evening. For those of you from the New York City area, we'd like to be the first to say welcome home. I would have been happy to fly home with United, and they were very good about issuing a refund for my cancelled flight. But JetBlue is definitely a better airline, and it was great flying with them today. I'm really grateful that I was able to make it home, and hopefully none of you got caught up in all of this madness and were also able to spend some quality time with your loved ones. That'll do it for this trip report. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.